Okay, and welcome back to the Rebuild Health and Fitness Podcast. And today we've finally dragged her down after weeks and months of trying to just get her attention. Uh, she's finally here. So we've got Sky Elizabeth, uh, brackets Asquith. So fake last name, so people from her youth can't find her, I'm sure. So Sky is one half of her own alter ego by day. She's one of the, I would say, the best nutritionists and personalities out there today. She's a guest speaker, female Coaching expert, Bozzy Top Positivity Empower. By night, she's a raver that goes by Sky XOX. Where is she from? No one really knows. But what I do know is that she's exceptional at what she does. And this is why this conversation is going to be a brilliant one. Sky, how are you? I'm oh, great. That was the best podcast intro I've ever had. Thanks for that. It's true, though, isn't it? It is, but don't be telling people about Sky XOX. Like you're already privy to that because I like you. No one else gets to see I, that alter ego. <laughs> when there's like I see like your Instagram stories come up, I'm like, all right, Sky Elizabeth coaching. I'm like, oh cool. And then I see Sky XOX post one, and I'm like, yes, what's going on on here? <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you'll get some followers to. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> you'll is be it... entertained if nothing else. That's it. But how are you doing? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. I'm good um, post-COVID. Things yeah. getting back to normal-ish. Our end, anyway. Sorry about you guys in lockdown. Yeah, it's just starting for us. Yeah, it feels like the pandemic is, like, literally just starting <laughs> again. Yeah, because this is, like, is this not the longest one you've had in quite a while? I think it's the, yeah, it's the longest one we've had and it's our most cases. I think we're only up to, like, 80 cases, but, you know. <laughs> Less, yeah, I yeah. think, isn't it? Everyone's freaking out. We're locked down because of Delta. So Sky, take us back a little bit. Just um, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, that's on what you just said, James. Yes, I am a nutritionist. Uh, that's how we met on Mac Nutrition. Well, not physically, but we met through the course. But I've been a coach for seven years now. That makes me feel so old when I say that. But yeah, seven years I've been coaching. Um, Started out as a personal trainer on the gym floor and uh, went through the whole self-employed personal trainer life back seven years ago. And I was probably just like all the other bro personal trainers out there, full of bro science, misinformation, <laughs> did a bit of bodybuilding, um, which is probably going to tie into the things that we're going to talk about mm. today. Um, and then, yeah, ended up doing... Mac Nutrition Uni about three years ago. I was working as a gym manager at the time, actually, for um, a big chain in the UK. And then during the pandemic, just realized it's not what I wanted to do and started coaching nutrition, but mainly just females. So I only work with females at the moment. Sexist. And I love it. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so obviously, this is a, this is a, a big conversation. I suppose my, I have my opinions on it, but not, not overly. Too much. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking forward to diving in but where do we even start like what is body positivity and sort of who does it affect and what are the impacts okay so you, we've got two different things so we've got like body positivity which is like a bit of a movement and we've got like positive mm. body image which one do you want to go with first one body positivity yeah yeah so there's like a movement got body it? image down the line okay cool so body positivity um, so yeah, that's just like a bit of a movement that's kind of, I guess, gathered speed uh, recently. Um, so it's kind of just getting people to appreciate, respect and accept bodies for kind of what they are, as they are, and more for its functions and activities rather than simply what it looks like. Good answer. But who's it? Who so if you're talking body positivity, how do, you, how do you think that is going? How do you think the, um, what did you say it was? The movement. The movement is going. I think it's, it obviously has its flaws. I think overall, it is quite a positive thing. Mm. Um, it's obviously come from this kind of backlash towards diet culture, which is quite difficult for me because I do tend to sit in the middle of this. Yeah. You know, like I do feel like people can diet if they want to diet, but I feel like the reasons have to be the right reasons. 100%. Yeah. So, so 
how do you how do you when you're working with your clients how do you define that distinction like how what do you do to define whether someone is or you think someone is ready to diet or you just help them celebrate who they are sorry can you just repeat that my end it just froze a little bit that's all right uh, i was just just saying like how how do you define the distinction between whether someone should diet or whether you just help them you know celebrate who who they are yeah that's a good question um I think it comes from the the first conversation that you have with them you can pretty much tell by the kind of things that people are already engaging in and the way that they speak about themselves whether they're in quite a bad place and you know the language that they use towards themselves the things that they've already tried the things that they're currently doing you can kind of see if their behaviors aren't really helpful and they're not healthy and they're potentially in a place where they're willing to do anything and not really thinking about the impact it's going to have on their health and so in that case instead of me being like oh and I and I'm not really that type of person that says oh love yourself anyway I'm just not yeah. about that because mm-hmm. you can't just go from I hate myself to I am the shit that's not how it works the focus then is just getting them to focus on healthy habits and building better habits yeah and knowing that if weight loss comes from that that's great but just getting them to kind of change how they speak to themselves, what they're focusing on, and just reminding them like everything that you've tried before up until now, what is, how has it impacted you? Have you had success? No. Okay, great. Do you think that's them working then? Do you think that's something that we should continue to do? You know, speaking to ourselves like crap, Mm -hmm. over-exercising, exercising for the wrong reasons, restricting food, making yourself miserable, missing out on social occasions. So having those conversations and getting them to focus on everything, and stepping away from, like most of my clients don't weigh themselves. They don't take measurements and um, getting them to focus on the other things that they are gaining. Even if they are on a fat loss journey, not making it all about, yay, your body's smaller, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's incredibly powerful. And I think, you know, it's, it's something that needs to be celebrated more within the sort of nutritionist space like so many people are already conditioned to thinking like if they need to lose weight they need to constantly weigh themselves in track everything do all their measurements where there's so many other little objective and subjective things they can focus on that's going to have a more positive impact long term and you're trying to undo like years of years and years and years of you know poor mindset in relation to that um but from your experiences so far like what do you think leads people to be, to develop this sort of negative mindset around their body image? Is it, you know, I suppose a lot of it's around like society and childhood and other trauma. Like what, what is the yeah main contributing factor in your experience? I think all of those things, I think all of those things can play a part, but you know, in the terms of what is in our scope of practice, it's not our, it's not our job to then start on picking people's trauma and what they've been through. Of course, if we're aware of it and we know about it, then, then we can be mindful of the language that we use in case we're triggering people. But I think a lot of it does come down to, you know, society, the media, but also their environment and their kind of, and cultural differences. I have a client who, um, in her culture, she's a Muslim. She says, if you tell tell someone you look healthy, that is an insult. (laughs) It means you've gained weight and that is a bad thing. You know, because I said, yeah exactly because i said to her we were talking about language use and she said people keep complimenting me on the fact that i've lost weight that's not a goal of hers but she has yeah it's like i feel better i'm performing better i've lost a bit of weight people keep complimenting me and i said maybe just tell them like yeah i feel healthier i look healthy and she's like it's a really that negative thing in my culture <laughs> like mm. if someone says that in my family would be like that's an insult you can't say that so things like that can impact it um if being healthy and gaining weight is a negative thing you start to then have that negative thought in your head of if i gain weight that's bad i'm undesirable yeah it's yeah. It's, re- it's really interesting obviously i've not thought about um that side of things necessarily with mm-hmm. other cultures we were speaking about a cultural difference yesterday but i do as a as a nutritionist now and i'm really trying to push it especially around sort of our area or our gym where we don't when people lose weight it's not necessarily celebrated necessarily because then i believe the weight gain is not as bad either because they're gonna you're gonna do you're gonna do both yeah Um, but again it's a really bad cycle when people compliment people constantly on their bodies just from someone that we know um 
someone told them a few weeks ago, oh, maybe a couple of months ago, they're like, oh, you look, you look so lean, you look great, but she has actually got an eating disorder. So it's like, yeah. Then came to me and it's like, hey, you know, they've told me I look this way. They told me I really look really good. Now I'm sort of I don't want to change. It's like it's dangerous. Yeah. It's really hard, and like as much as we're in this industry, I feel like we this industry is still so much to blame for all of these people's body image problems. And like me personally, I was before I even got into training at all because I only I came into um, training myself like twelve years ago after I broke my hip. So it was completely health reasons. I never ever hated my body. I had no issues. I was very neutral towards my body. Um, as long as it kind of wo- uh, worked and it, it kept me being you get around the dance floor and, yeah exactly that James <laughs> and and it wasn't until I got into the industry and then felt like you know everyone's getting lean everyone's bodybuilding that's the thing to do you've got to be taken seriously as a coach so I did that that completely screwed my relationship with my body with food mm. with exercise with everything having that and I keep banging on about it on um, social media at the minute but having just those appearance-based goals I think that is the thing that that can really negatively impact people's body image because like you say you know you go one way you get all these compliments I was getting leaner everyone was like you look amazing you look yeah. amazing I was underweight and no period most unhealthiest I've ever been and then when I started to get healthy again no compliments yeah mm. so it's funny you say that like Kate our um our media guru um, she had tumor on her spine and kidney disease. And then like, she was living in Dubai at the time. And like, she was just losing weight rapidly from kidney failure, from kidney failure, you know, fair. Um, wow. yeah. And then, but she was getting all these compliments from people. It's like, Oh, you lost all this weight. You look amazing. And really she was literally dying. I, th- I think it's crazy, it, isn't it? I think it's also funny that you've got a whole industry of people that have body image issues leading the way for general population <laughs> it's body image issues you know so many people get into this industry because they have body image issues and because they do train and they do look a certain way so it's like it's fucking blind leading the blind a lot of the time yeah exactly and like i hate to say it but you know i have been that person i've been that person that has you know used my body as a business card because i didn't yeah. i didn't know any better at that time I've tried. And I I've, tr- like, I've tried it's not working <laughs> 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 If I can try it. And that's it. But then, you know, when I didn't have that body anymore because, hello, I wanted to be healthy and actually, like, have a period and not weigh 49 kilos. And um, then I was like, you know, I, I think there's more to it than this, than just the way that I look. I don't think the way that I look makes me a good coach. And actually, when I was bodybuilding, I was probably the worst coach I've ever been. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think the media, social media, and definitely some of the people that, not even the people that are in our industry, but, you know, these influencers and fitfluencers and yeah. stuff like that. I think it's quite problematic. And last week I was actually looking at some of the research around it and, like, it's all kind of in agreement. Like, fitspo, what people think is influencing people, actually isn't. Mm. And it only really motivates people that are already active and training. And people that aren't, it doesn't motivate them. It makes them feel worse. Yeah, it's really um, special personal bias i suppose have you seen the yeah. james smith bodybuilding thing going on at the moment it's just no i've seen people talking about it i've not looked it's just basically blew up but he's he's fine with it he's like so many people are getting hurt by this but they're the people that are already in it do you know what I mean everyone that's coming out of yeah so yeah <laughs> bias is a big one and i want to flip back talking about bias basically back to when you said about when people come on and you may not take them on and we're probably in the yeah. same the same boat but i have had people in the past as well say listen, if you don't do it, then I am going to go somewhere else, which is like, right, well, at least at least if I'm looking after them to some extent, I believe that I can do the best job as long as I can just say, hey, this is going to take a lot longer than what you believe it is. And then, it, you know, it can take months to get them to a place of, I don't think self-love, like you said, is, is a big one, but I think they need to get to a place of like self-acceptance. Like this is where we are 100%. right now. 100%. Um, and this is something that I have, I, well, not recently, but I did start. So I, I started to be that person that was like, you're not ready to diet. I'm not working with you because I'm not having that on my conscience. You know, you need to work on other things. But then it did, and I think it might have been, even been um, Jake Lenardo who does Break Binge Eating. Yeah. Do you follow yeah. that page? Yeah, yeah so really good. I heard him on a podcast and he said, look, if you know that you can do the best job and do it in, in a kind of ethical way and the most holistic way, 
then do it because they are going to go somewhere else, whether that's a fad diet, whether that so I've got to the point now where I think, you know what, I actually give a shit. And maybe if this person isn't ready to accept that they shouldn't be focusing on dieting, I will help them until they maybe get to that point where it's not the be all and end all because if not they might go to somebody else that does worsen their relationship with food and exercise and their body image so yeah same as you James how does it go not being overly objective I've gone through different paths of I've got some clients that don't weigh in I've got some that I do make weigh in consistently especially that probably first month I would say so they can actually just understand body fluctuations then I've got a few that will be like every three days or a little bit more blase about it but you know people are coming to you arguably for weight loss is the majority of the time like if i think yeah. about what we do it's probably 90 percent, sadly but it is probably 90 percent fat loss but then you're telling them that we're not going to be objective in anything we do we're just going to go off our subjective i don't tell anybody to be honest it's it i i lay out the information like you know i have the conversation how do you feel about weighing yourself if you weighed yourself tomorrow and it went up what would be what would be your response and mm. then it's like, well, I'd freak out. I'm like, cool. <laughs> then you shouldn't be weighing yourself. Yeah. And some people go, I'm absolutely fine with weighing myself. I weigh myself every day. I know the fluctuations. I'm logical. I can get over it. I'm like, cool. Then weigh yourself. I literally give them the option. What we can do is we can do scale weight, but we're not going to do it once a week. We're going to do it three times or five times, take an average. We can do measurements or you can get some clothing, see how that fits. You can take photos if you want to see physical change as well as performance markers are you sleeping better um how's your stress all those other things I very much leave it up to them I don't dictate um, and that's what I used to do but now I've, I had a consultation yesterday actually with a, with a woman and I said to her like how do you feel about weighing yourself and she's like I, I really don't like it um and I was like cool then you don't have to weigh yourself and she's like mm. that's the first time I've ever heard a coach say that they don't want me to weigh themselves because that's why I've not gone with other coaches because they've said I really need you to weigh yourself it can just be so triggering for people and it's just another form of data and it's not always that accurate especially for women i, I find for guys because it's so stable it's it's easier did you see my post yesterday about weight nah it's all right if you didn't like don't worry about this guy yeah did yeah saved it but it was pretty much about weight and then about 20 people might have commented on there their weight, you know, and it varied from, I got a mate who's a powerlifter, it was like six kilos. I got a mate who was a UFC, like um, MMA fighter, is like 8.2. Most of them around that 2.5, three kilo weight fluctuation within 24 hours. You know, but yeah. people think they're, they are the anomaly. Like I get messages like, hey, half kilo up. I like look at their data for what they had yesterday and they went to an Italian. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. It's fine. <laughs> You'll be okay. Bit, bit of water retention, bit of carbohydrate. You'll be cool. Yeah, it's like, like yeah, I was, it's so it's so good that you sort of use all these other little metrics to measure measure success because so often and you know it's still like deep ingrained within myself that you use the scale as like whether you're on or, on or off the right track and if you if someone's not ready to use the scales even though they might be you know sleeping better moving better like you know, they're eating more nutritious foods, they overall feel better, you know, they're doing four four things out of five that are amazing, the scale weight might not move or might go up mm. slightly, they hang on that to that so rather bad. than celebrating That's all it. the other little wins they've had. Yeah, massive. Exactly, yeah, exactly. I, and go on. No, go on. I was just, you know, I used to see that pattern all the time. Um, and this is kind of the weren't getting results and we looked into it, it's like, this is why, because, you know, on a weekend or on a Monday, the scale weight, it's like they gear themselves up for it not to be right or not to what they want to see. Don't use logic. And then that just completely changes their behaviors for that next three days. And they just self-sabotage. Oh, well, I'm broken. It's been a week and I've done this and nothing's changed. So if you just remove that tiny thing and they don't know that, you know, their scale weight's gone up because they're retaining water, they just carry on as normal. Um, yeah, no, it's a really interesting point. I believe even I have a few um, over probably these last couple of months, I've had a few women come to me from around Australia that don't want to lose weight. They've come to me to increase performance or increase energy and just to work on their food. Yet mm -hmm. I will still get messages like, Hey, my weight hasn't changed. I'm like, yeah, that's the fucking point. That's what we're trying to do. But they're so tied up on it. You have to explain them why they came to me in the first place. I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. 
Oof. Yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. And this is another thing, isn't it? Like my clients that have been, you know, yo-yoing all their lives will then have like a period where they've loosened off with what they've been doing and they haven't been that consistent. They're like, yeah, yeah I've got basic behaviors in place. I haven't gone off the rails. My weight's not changed. I'm like, amazing. You've mm. maintained your weight without having to track every single step you take, without tracking every single calorie that's gone in your mouth. And you've been still going for walks, still training. You've enjoyed some meals out and your weight's maintained. Like that, that's where you want to live at. Like, you know, that's yeah. a win. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Um, how we spoke about it a little bit in terms of the uh, body image and the impact people have, but how important is it for like their friendship circles, relationships? You know, there's something I speak about a lot is like social modeling with their friends or with their, um, their family or if they're in new partners, like what role does this play in body image? It plays a huge role. I think we always think about body image is just about the way that we look and it's not, it's about the way that we think the way that we feel, the way that we act about how we look, how we perceive how we look, and it affects everybody. Um, you know, it affects your work, it affects your relationships, it affects your confidence. Like there was one study that looked at um, women and the kind of speaking up at work and found that seven in 10 women across the globe report not being assertive in their opinion or sticking to the decision when they don't feel good about their body. Mm. So like imagine that in a meeting room just because you don't have you know, healthy body esteem or you're having a bad body image day, you then just doubt everything that you're saying. <laughs> like that to me is mental. And I think that's that's something that I always talk about. Like it's not just about the way that your body looks, it's about the way that you're then acting because of that. The way yeah. that it's then spilling into the rest of your life. Sorry, go on, John. Oh, I was just gonna say, like even when you think like you put yourself in that sort of situation and view it from another lens, like it's just such a toxic feeling like nothing good comes from that it would just sit it like you might have the best idea you know you're right but because you don't have the confidence to speak up that's just gonna yeah eat away at you and yeah it's just it's shit it's terrible yeah and then there's like women that won't go for health checks because they're they, they're not comfortable in their bodies they hate their bodies for whatever reason um, and all the other behaviors that come with it and it just it, it just can really really negatively impact your mental health like people think it's just like I need to lose weight and get confidence it's like it's, there's so much more going on than yeah. that and you need to address like what's feeding it why do you think this way and like you said James it's not about going okay I want you to stand in front of the mirror and go I'm a bad bitch I love myself it's not that it's to go okay I, I don't love my body right now but what does it allow me to do I've had kids or I go to the gym or, you know, I walk to work or it, it, I went on a hike the other day. Like it allows me to live my life and I'm grateful for that. And I accept where I am now and I know that I can change if I want to, but it's not because I hate myself. It's because I respect myself. Yeah. It's such a difficult, <laughs> difficult thing. When we look at the brain and how much stronger the emotional side is to the logical side, like you're always going to be fighting this losing battle. Like you have yeah. to learn eventually to work together. You never, your logical is never going to overpower it. And that's why even when you get people to the weight they weren't or the body image that they thought initially, and they are happy, they are happy with where they're at, let's say, and they are doing everything they wanted. They're still going to have bad body image days. Like they're still yeah. going to have days. I think people think that, you know, magic happens and they never look at themselves yeah. negatively ever again. Yeah. Like it happens even to myself, you know, I walk past the mirror sometimes and be like, nice boy. And then the next day I walk past the mirror and go, Jesus Christ, mate, you've let yourself bloody go. Nothing's changed yeah. objectively, just oh, the way that I'm yeah. looking at myself. Well, the worst is after like a, a night out when you're hungover, you come yeah. in on Mondays like, oh my God, I've lost all my muscle. <laughs> and then you do like I one. look like one, shit. Yeah. You do like one session. It's like, whew, <laughs> got it back. Yeah, it is. It's so interesting. And it's like, you know, at certain times um, during the menstrual cycle, like for women, like we can be really prone to bad body image. Even just like having a bad day at work or negative emotions in general can then lead us to having a bad, you know, a negative view when we look at ourselves in the mirror. But I think like you said, James, I say to my clients, like the goal is never to have perfect body image. You're never going to have an amazing view of yourself all of the time. It's going to be on a sliding scale. You're going to go up and down it all the time. What you're trying to do 
is have these bad body image days and not feel the need to act on them. Yeah, great yeah. point. To just to just acknowledge them, just let them just be in the moment. I'm having a body that bros. Um, <laughs> I'm having a bad body image day. That's okay. Um, I know it will pass. I don't yeah. need to go and do a ton of cardio. I don't need to go and restrict the next meal. I just need to sit with it and know that it will pass and know what's feeding it. I think that's a really good point yeah. when you have the ability to just get over it because you know everything's going to be fine in the long run. I, yeah. Something I say quite a lot is that I believe humans are only happy with their body retrospectively. Oh, yeah. They're never, no one has ever looked in the mirror and thought, lean enough, big enough. You know, like I'm there, like I'm at this shape. Even when Arnold Schwarzenegger run his seventh Mr. Olympia came off, said his calf's too small. It's like, we're never yeah. going to be happy. But when we look back at pictures, we go, fuck you, all right then. Do you know what I mean? In, <laughs> in that moment. Mm. So that's where that self-acceptance, like this is where I'm at right now. This is good. Yeah. And like bodies are supposed to change. Bodies are going to change. Your lifestyle is never going to be the same. So, mm. I, but I just think, again, that's the media, isn't it? Like, we're always sold a product that sucks wrinkles, a product that gets rid of your gray hair. You know, there's different, we're getting Botox and making our lips bigger. Like nothing is ever good enough. You've got to be doing something to change. So it does make it really hard. Yeah. And we, you know, we, we quite often say, you know, like comparison is the the thief of joy. Um, and, you know, quite often not not extreme lengths but you encourage i've encouraged some clients to unfollow certain people on instagram who they're constantly sort of comparing themselves to and it's like oh you know she's had a kid and she looks like this already i was like well she's not you don't yeah. you know you're not annie thoris daughter <laughs> yeah she like, won't get past yeah. that how what kind of you know how, how do you combat that yeah that's a really good point because we can't control what comes out in the media to a certain degree you know you can curate your feed you can stop seeing you know like when I came out of bodybuilding I did I muted everybody everybody that was a bodybuilder I muted because I just didn't want to see it and I started to follow different body shapes people that were training for different reasons so I think if you can diversify your feed that's going to help and also like just stepping back from this and like you just said what is the context of this person's life this 22 year old that has a six pack and massive glute that is at uni living with her parents that train three day, times a day doesn't buy her own food of course she looks that way mm. like of course you are a 35 year old woman with two kids a full-time job like you've got to kind of step back and be able to apply some logic to it but i definitely think you know finding what triggers you diversifying your feed following more i know body positive accounts but even like the research around seeing images and videos of like performance space training or athletes yeah is more is more motivating than seeing people training for appearance based reasons that's why i think crossfit was an absolute game changer about 10 years ago unbelievable, unbelievable. Oh, it's done was- so much for women's sport and like their perceptions around like what health is yeah and i was um thinking about this today actually because you guys were our kind of you're, yeah. you're a crossfit yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously I've, I've gone back to CrossFit now and it is just so funny how it is so different from a commercial gym and how really it is all about performance it's about the way you move it's about the skills that you've got and that must do wonders for women's body image because Definitely. you're not fo- you're not focusing on what you look like no one's in a class saying like oh we're gonna get bikini ready and this is your fat crying like no one's saying that uh, yeah I've had it to a point where I've had some let's say clients that are overweight and they were dieting. And obviously when you're dieting for a long period of time, you are completely depleting how you are being. So eventually you'll have to go up again, you know, and they will come to me personally and say like, Hey, I'm not feeling very good. I'm not being able to perform how I can. Can we do something about this? And I'm like, right, good. This, you know, this is a, yeah. good, this is a good step because they're, yeah, they're losing the weight and they think they're going into the image that they want to be, but yet they're still not performing. So now they're just having that battle between performance and aesthetic, which I think is great. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I've just taken on a new client and she's, she just crossed it four times a week. And she said like, my only goal is I don't think I'm eating well to perform what I'm doing. Mm. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm feeling it. I was like, hallelujah. I'll work with that all day long, but <laughs> <Yes>. I think... <laughs> 
Yeah, I think that is the thing though. We've got to understand that aesthetics is the is mainly what gets people in the door when they come to us. It's an yeah. aesthetic goal. It's up to us to be mindful of our language, our messaging, how we portray ourselves, how we talk about other people. Um, yeah, to, yeah. You change, see that to, to change the way that they start to think. Yeah, once you see that shift in um, perspective of how how they're approaching their ch- training, like that's a lifestyle change. You don't you don't want to go back to the other way. Once you start celebrating those little performance like performance wins, you know you've you you change you change the way you view training. Like so often, you know we spoke about numerous times. Like people ca- come to the gym as a place of punishment. They rarely come to it as a place of empowerment and having you know these boutique fitness gyms these crossfit gyms having like having standards met around like purely performance and that's it you can be you know not at the healthiest weight for yourself but you can be smashing like smashing your deadlift hitting all kinds of different different times and everyone's cheering you on for it no not one person is mentioning your weight or even thinking about that and i think it's such a yeah it's been amazing for the industry that has been so focused on the bodybuilding scene for so long. Definitely. Definitely. Well, so I, the same for like, go on, Dave. I just think it's with, um, you know, people trying to build muscle again. I th- believe we, which we have spoken about numerous times, females, especially, and a lot of males, but females, especially will just try and diet and diet and diet and diet and diet until they are at the body shape they believe that they want, but they've never actually spent time building the muscle up to get the body image that they have in their mind anyway. So I think when you go into a, like Sean said, a boutique gym and you are focusing on performance and building muscle and eating efficiently, you may actually get a lot closer to the body shape that you want to be eventually anyway. Like how, how, how lean, I've seen the photos obviously when you were doing bodybuilding, what percentage of body fat did you get down to? Do you know? No, I didn't measure it. This is, this is really interesting because I'm writing a post about this today. People would ask me every day, like, what's your body fat? Because I'm like, I just know I'm lean, mate. Look at me. Look at the state of me. I've got, I'm cold. I've got no energy. I can't train. I can't sweat. No matter how hard I train. Um, but I, honestly, I'd probably say I'm very close to single digit. Oh, you it must be like there's n- there was no body fat on you. No, and there was six weeks between my first competition and my second, and I was like, I need to maintain this because oh, like, yeah. I can't lose any muscle. And I managed to get even leaner. And I was like, I can't bloody believe this. This is ridiculous. But yeah, super lean, super lean, ridiculously lean. Just moving on, speaking about body fat and people saying things to you, like what do you say to people that believe they have the right to comment on other people's bodies? Do you know what? I I don't really come across people that do. I don't really have never had that situation in person where someone really comment on someone else's body. And maybe it's because I speak about it so much that people around me don't do it. Mm. They definitely don't do it to me. Actually, my housemate the other day, she came in and she was like, I think I lost weight. She was like, damn it, I need to eat. Like it's such a negative connotation to her. Like, I don't want to lose weight. I don't lose muscle like you say. And I was just like, doesn't matter if you lose a bit of weight or gain a bit of weight. Like that's just life. Like, are you enjoying what you're doing? You're training and stuff. She's like, yeah, I am. Um, but I think, I think it's it's a difficult conversation to have. And I think it's just reminding people that, you know, like like you just said that example, you don't know the environment that has caused that change in body. You don't know that that person's not chronically ill. You don't know that that person has gone through some really traumatic or stressful event. You don't know that that person needs to gain weight like me to get their health back you don't know that mm. so i think it's just reminding people to have that lens on when you go into compliment someone's appearance and if you can just don't compliment someone's appearance just don't make any comment i would say that's the like, just don't but it does it does happen like my wife works in a construction industry which you know let's stereotype that to some extent um, I've seen it with a lot of my clients in their industries. They've been spoken about in certain ways. Like when I was, when I knew that you were coming on, I spoke to a few of the females that we have at the gym and a couple of things were like the bad language and maybe old school morals compared to sort of this new school, like you say, this body positivity movement where, you know, she walked into a house and her dad was like, geez, you can tell you've been eating. 
You know what I mean? Like just the these generation. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Like they don't believe that there's some psychological trauma that's going to come from come from this. You know, you've been trying so hard, you've been doing so well, you've been feeling great about yourself, and that one sentence can literally derail people. I've seen it happen time and time again. Yeah, and I think in terms of that, okay, we can tell people, you know, don't comment on people's bodies, but there also is a little bit of responsibility on us to understand that people are ignorant and set in those ways and they're just not aware of how it affects people. And we have to try and build up some some resilience if we can. And I know that was difficult depending on your situation. Um, but yeah, I think if you're somebody that, it doesn't bother, but you hear it, like absolutely call it out because that's the only way that people will, will kind of change. Um, yeah, it's a really difficult one, especially with the older generation. Yeah, and what about flipping it? Like, you know, there's a bit of a movement too for people. There's always going to be yin and yang, isn't there? It's like really politics. Yeah. You've always got one side, one side, the other. So like that new school sort of possibly, you know, toxic positivity. Can you explain yeah. toxic positivity? I guess it's just that like excessive overgeneralization or everything's happy, everything's optimistic. It kind of it kind of denies or minimalizes or invalids people's experiences, I think, because it's just mm. like, oh, it's fine. It could be so much worse. Everything's gonna be okay. You know, you you've still got this, you've still got that, and it it doesn't make you feel any better in that moment, because that is still your lived experience. Like, oh, it could be worse, it could be this, or just choose to be happy. I guess that's toxic. <laughs> yeah, I'm how good is that? Just make that choice. Like, okay, great. <laughs> I'm gonna just, go do that right now. That's it. Just stop don't, stressing. Yeah, don't <laughs> just stop being depressed. Just cheer exactly. up. Just cheer up. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like we've already spoke about, you know, <laughs> that is it's toxic, that kind of positivity. Whereas if you can work on your self-acceptance and your gratitude, they are much healthier emotions to practice in times of adversity or in these events like well, negative body image days. Well, that's a, that's a great point. Like how, how do you help people cultivate some more gratitude in their lives? Are there any specific exercises or um, what do you do to bring attention to it? So it's part of their check-in every week. Um, they do kind of reflect on things that have gone really well little wins that they've had no matter what it is it doesn't have to be nutritional training based and then things that they're grateful for and we do journaling so I give them journaling prompts to help them um some of them are really new to it so they find it really a like alien and um, sometimes it's like okay don't write it down but you know what things do you enjoy doing whether it's going for a walk or you know having a bath reading a book like try and just think in those quiet moments that you get to yourself what are you grateful for? Like, what do you have that brings you joy? That has nothing to do with your body. Um, and like some people meditate. I'm not really a big meditator, but some people <laughs> do. Why is, that, why is that, Sky? Does your brain do too much? <laughs> yeah, I've got ADHD. Like, I don't want to like, <laughs> no, I can't do it. Uh, mindfulness I can do. I can go out for a walk and just be like, oh yeah, I'm grateful for this. I'm thinking about this generally like sitting still and closing my eyes do you find jiu-jitsu is a little bit of meditation for you i personally because i've got my phone i'm constantly in and if i miss a beat i'm gonna get choked so i'm like right i'm in no no i'm stimulated to high heaven like <laughs> i am i literally sometimes there's like there's too many things in my head and i'm like right am i gonna go side control am i gonna this joke what am i doing where are they going like today I was, that is exactly what i was thinking in my head it's like when is my brain gonna get calm because look, there was a girl, she's a purple belt. She absolutely kicked my ass, obviously. But like, she looks so fucking calm. It's like they have this look in their eye. But no, yeah, I, I find I have to be doing to be mindful, but something quite chilled, not like someone trying to take my head off my shoulder. Um, but yeah, that's the things that we use. So just a basic reflective tasks, writing it down and then journaling. I give them lots of prompts. Um, and the language that I use as well, like I'm very mindful about the things that I say and the things that I congratulate them on. And yeah. It's more about their kind of their behaviors, their mindset, you know, getting them to look at the way that they're eating and be like, do you realize how different you're eating is from now to then, like emotionally and their relationship with food? And they're like, wow, like never really thought about that. Um, but yeah. 
I think it's a great point. I, th- I think the feeling brain or the emotional brain too can only handle, it only needs empathy. That's the only sort of emotion it can deal with is just empathy in the way that you speak to yourself. Just circling back a little bit of what you said about wins. And this is just probably something I'm coming across in the last couple of months, which I'm interested to get your opinion on. Because we check in every week and I'll say three wins, three things that maybe didn't go as well. And then I'll get them to coach themselves. And then there'll be a few finishing questions. But I do have a few clients that I do tell, tell to not celebrate, over-celebrate their wins because they seem to put their wins on this massive pedestal, like really big. But then, they're, then they're, their bad times are so much lower because they, they, they're putting everything like this much. Like this has been amazing. Like when they don't mm. so well, it's this massive drop. So I'm like, I need, I'm trying to find this balance. It's only happened with a couple of people. Where I'm like, hey, let's just, let's just be at this time. You know, let's not over celebrate this let's not overwork it let's just be and accept it and let's sort of move on what do you think about that i'm just really curious actually because i've never done it too much in less than from the last couple of months so what so say that so they over celebrate their wins and then if they like have like a, a quote unquote bad week then it's okay. catastrophic yeah yeah it's a yeah it's a big it's a big drop yeah it's difficult a lot of mine do that they do it week in week out and that's where I'm like, they, they will maybe avoid checking in. I'm like, don't do that. That's the <laughs> yeah, worst thing yeah, you yeah, can do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like, no, I'm not checking in. Um, and it's just, again, it's getting them to look back and be like, okay, this, this one week out of 52, <laughs> what have you achieved so far? Like the little things, like you've built up these habits, you've got these things moving forward. Life is going to happen. Things are going to happen. Like you can't just then throw, throw it all out um you I don't think you can really it's a difficult one isn't it because you don't mm. want to say don't celebrate your wins yeah, yeah <laughs> like, no, it is no it's a, but trying to find this I think gap at the moment yeah I think it's, maybe um it's just being human isn't it it's just like yeah, people yeah. like that common humanity like this happens you're not the only client that does this you're not the only person I've done this like we don't need to then go backwards we can keep moving forward um, but that's what coaching is about, isn't it? It's just getting people to stop catastrophizing, which is what everyone's great at. Yeah, it's so much just trying to help people be be in the present a little bit more. People are either hanging on to the the little wins that they've had and thinking that's going to ride them through forever, or they're hanging on to the the negative things that have happened and it's holding them from even taking another step further forward. I think that's such yeah. a like just yeah, just be present. You are you are where you are right now. And yeah, let's take the next step if need be. I think it's also like they they may be judging themselves quite a lot. I think it all comes back to that mindfulness of just removing that judgment and just being a bit more like curious. Like, okay, it wasn't a great week. What happened? Like, why did that happen? Why do you think that happened? And it's almost like you know, unhooking from these thoughts that you get and literally telling your clients like you are hooked into this thought this story that you're telling yourself that you are shit at this you failed at this you've done that the more you hook into it the more you're gonna you know make that a reality you need to kind of get to a place where you go right I'm telling myself that I'm a failure again I'm telling myself that I've been a greedy twat all week or whatever language they want to use you know remove that language and unhook from that thought and know that you are just it's not the truth you're telling yourself a story because of past events Mm. and getting them to kind of to realize that you know the power is in their language and their thoughts it's not about what they've actually done it's about what they feel what they think and feel about what they've done yeah and it's so it's so true about like their environment growing up and their past trauma and what keeps them thinking like that have you ever heard of that i forgot what it is but it's like it's about the elephant where once elephants are born in certain countries they're put on this little piece of rope and they're just told oh, to yeah. stay where they are because they're not strong enough. And then as they become the strongest animals in the world, they still think that they're attached to this, even though they could pull they that fucking thing they don't out of the wall. The so they yeah. don't move. It's limiting just, beliefs, isn't it? Yeah, they just stay put. Yeah. Not sad. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Oh, here she is. Oh. This, is, <laughs> this, is, this, is this is this is Joe Rogan's Jamie. We've got, we've got it around. <laughs> Go. Uh, th- this is really very relevant to me. And I lost about. 20 kilos I think it was when I was sick but my perception of myself never changed like I didn't ever feel like I was skinny I felt unwell and I don't know like I've I've bounced now I lost 20 I've gained 10 um and it was just like yep I never thought of myself as healthy or unhealthy and I look at photos and I'm like oh my god it was huge and then it was oh I was emaciated and there's no do you have any like advice for people about embracing 
the healthy or I don't know this whole podcast has been really interesting because I feel like I am a culprit for this and don't have positive body image. Wow. it's um it's, it's a funny one it's a difficult one because when you do when your body changes in quite a, a short period of time you can get this body dysmorphia where you don't don't see that change she just oh, got you back you're back go on <laughs> um yeah so when you do when your body changes quite drastically in try, quite a short period of time you can get this body dysmorphia where you don't see that change um and it's like when people lose weight they sometimes still see themselves in a bigger body and vice versa and um, and I know like when I came out of bodybuilding and I started to gain like a tiny bit of weight I'm still talking like a really really small size to me I was like whoa I'm huge um and I think that comes down to like if it's bad obviously you probably need to go and and refer out and, and maybe get some CBT or some therapy for it um but noticing like how much you check your body how much are you looking in the mirror how much are you like fixating on checking yourself whether that's weighing measurement looking and try and reduce the frequency that you do that that will definitely help um and again like we keep saying like the way to kind of cultivate more positive body image is to stop putting so much onus on what you look like as who you are thinking about other things that you bring to the table other things that you have going on that isn't just about the way that you look yeah i think that's excellent advice and one of the things i find that has helped people is helping them identify the values like if they see that they see themselves as a fit and happy healthy person what sort of values does that sort of person live by and that can simply mean like you know a fit health, healthy person is someone who trains for performance has a as a serving of protein in each meal sleeps seven to eight hours a night okay um, stays well hydrated like those those little things and they're all little actionable steps that people can adhere to that help them live the healthier life that they're, they're sort of searching for yeah and what about um Sorry, one more thing. Uh, with We talked about the older generation. So like my parents are culprits for this. Is there any tips for things interacting with them to help change mindset or language? Yes. Just like a middle finger. Yeah. I'm off. Well, you it's my mom talked about herself like that too. And yeah. so mm. that I think affects me and everyone thinks like it just frames the conversation a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you can shut the conversation down, like if you're not going to change what they speak about, maybe shut it down when they're doing it in front of you. Um, and I, I was always thinking this early, like the best way to stop people like focusing on not talking about the body is, or like focus on the body is to just make it like the most uninteresting thing in the world. You know, it's not good. It's not bad. I'm not proud. I'm not unhappy. You just don't even pay attention to it. I think sometimes we we try so much to normalize this and normalize that. But actually, do you know what the best way to normalize it is? Is to make it a non-event and not talk about it at all. Um, but it is so difficult with families. And I, I think if you can just kind of change the route of the conversation, shut it down, maybe. Or even just have like a really open and frank conversation and say, you know, the way that you speak about your body or the, other people's body, my body is it's quite triggering like it's not very pleasant for me and maybe having that conversation might make them think oh like might not change the way she speaks about herself but it might make her think in front of, of you but it's a really difficult one with friends and family it's a really good point and then I suppose that leads on to like perception the perception that you know we act the way that we believe people perceive us which I think is a really a really bad place to be um you know from past experience even with Oh, oh, with myself to some extent, I would always be the the yes man. So I would, I would drink a lot and I would do these other things because then whatever happened to my body shape, it was okay because I was this, you know, this dude that liked to party a lot. And you see it with a couple of people. I don't want to mention names that I've had that have been overweight and they become this like fun party girl. Like that's who she is. Do you know what I mean? So they play mm. into that and then they're so emotional in the week. They absolutely hate it. They want to change, but they're, they're, they're playing into this so much. Like how do we, how do we start to get out of that? You have to stop identifying as that person. You have to stop identifying with those behaviors instead of being like, you know, because this was me. I was that party girl. Like, I didn't really care about my body. And I was like, gym? I don't, I've never been to the gym. The only salad that I see is on the side of my kebab. And I just literally have to stop using that language. Like, I used to have to stop. 
saying I'm not a morning person. If I always say I'm not a morning person, I'm never going to be a morning person. Oh, <laughs> Kate, Kate, <laughs> Kate <laughs> that's that's that. Jeez, you, you see. Know, <laughs> done. <laughs> it is that though. It's like you, you, you start to say, okay, um, I, I'm at this moment in time, I'm not great at getting up in the morning, but I am trying to change that behavior. I am someone that is trying to get up early in the morning. Like for me, one of my things lately has been like, well, <laughs> in the past few years, I always tell myself I'm shit with money. No, you're not shit with money, Sky. Like you're shit with money because you tell yourself shit with money. You can get your shit together and be better with money. And that's the person that you are right now. You are trying to be better. So I think, again, it's about those limited beliefs in the way that you speak about yourself and stopping identifying with that person and start to think, who is the best version of me? What does that look like? What does she look like? Who do I want to be? Who will I be proud of? Okay, what behaviours does she have? Because I'm going to have those behaviours. Mm. Excellent point. Yeah, uh, yeah. no, I, yeah, all good. Sky, you're impressing me. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad. I think I'm not getting invited back. Let's see. <laughs> Um, like um, society's perception of a good body image is an interesting topic. So obviously we spoke about social media a little bit because we have this perceived idea about what this body image is. But like you said, culturally, that body image is going to change all around the world. And it changes decade by decade. Like, you know, yeah. there was thin spell and then fit spell replaced thin spell because thin was bad and thin was unhealthy. But now it's like, is fit spell quite unhealthy? This lean mm. athletic body. You know, that's maybe not getting the energy. Is that now unhealthy? So, yeah, I think, again, these pages that are posting about this and people that are talking about this more, about, you know, the fact that there's been these ideal bodies that have changed so much means that there is no ideal body. Mm. Well, yeah, Thank like you. there's always different trends. Remember, like, the, the thigh gap trend? Yeah. Um, still working on it. Still working on it. And then, like, yeah. yeah, like the dad bod trend. Your balls keep getting in the way. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the big ass, the small face, yeah. all that. Yeah, exactly. It's always changing. So it's it's difficult, I think, especially when you we are living in this place of comparison. But the more you can, you know, diversify what you see and what you expose yourself to the more you start to realize that there are so many different bodies out there and there's not there's no good or right or wrong it's whatever you feel like and what you like yeah no, this is this is good man i think like i think it's just removing yourself from you know some environments be that social media be that even the people around you i think it's really important yeah we had two members here back in the day that um both came to me to get ready for a photo shoot same as what you just did for your 30th because not for anything they just felt really good. They felt where they were at. Yeah. They both wanted to get ready for a photo shoot. They were both in good shape and in healthy states. Mm. So you could maybe go a little bit more aggressive with that photo shoot week to get them into sort of the shape that they wanted. Yeah. So both women were around the similar time. One posted them and she got so much love and respect and like, this is beautiful. This is everything. And then this other girl did it and she got slammed. She got slammed. Um, you know, why are you doing that? Why are you showing your body like this? Who do you think you are? This side of things. But they were the same pictures. They were this done exactly the, like, not the same pictures, but they were so yeah. fucking similar. But and they got into a different environment. Totally different yeah. environments because what this person is this way and this person is this way. And I was just like, it absolutely gobsmacked me. But the person that got treated that certain way, post, um, actually both, the person that got treated amazingly now feels a little bit bad that she isn't in that shape anymore where the person that got treated the other way her relationship with food and as a body image as a whole is still fairly positive but like yeah both they're both worse off for it they're both a little bit worse off for it for doing it you know the way yeah. that treated. and i think it just it comes down to when you do something like that like body run or a photo shoot you're placing so much emphasis on the way that you look mm. And you're taking away the emphasis from the person that you are, the values that you have, you know, the things that you, like I keep saying, like the other things that you bring to people's lives, like, you know, your family don't love you because you're, you've got a six pack. Your family don't love you because like, my family didn't love me anymore because I was lean. They probably were actually quite worried about me, but mm. like, you need, you need to have, you need to put emphasis into the other areas of your life, like your career, your relationships, your family. And, and for me, coming out of that environment, I had to focus on that. 
and I removed myself from my bodybuilding friends not like I went I wasn't a dick about it I just didn't spend that much time in those areas and I spent time with my friends that weren't into fitness so I didn't train regularly and I focused on making memories and I changed my goals to performance-based goals and I did curate my social media and you know I took responsibility of the way that I felt because I was putting myself in that environment so to a certain extent you can you can change your environment mm. um, and if you need to cut some friends off in the way like you might need to so, because if people are just so look not really that that great people no I think again another yeah really good point I believe as I've got older I've started to really realize the difference between my, my, my friends and my acquaintances to some extent. And I, I don't think, I think the both are really useful as well. Like one isn't just any less than the other. Like if I'm going out for a beer or whatever, I'm going to text certain people. They're not necessarily like my closest friends. Like us, what I'm going to speak to Sean about is probably going to be different to what I'm going to speak to them about, you know, so I bet it's just deciphering them two people two away from each other. I would take, the opinion of Sean, for example, seriously, the opinion of others, I'm just going to take you with a pinch of salt. Yeah, absolutely. And like, you know, you can joke that I've got to Instagram. Sean's now, probably a bad I'm... example for yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not even aware. But listen to what I say. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, we joke about me having to do Instagram accounts, but you know, my, my personal one, my private one, very, very few. James, you're one of the special few, you know, kind of it, people that are in my industry because I, I want to be able to step out of that and go to my friends and my family. And sometimes I don't want to see posts about nutrition and protein and training. Yeah. Sometimes I want to see people's dogs and babies and what holiday they've been on. And I think that's the difference Like you, you do have a certain amount of power and control of your environment. And, you know, you can change it up if, if you know that it's negatively impacted. Yeah. Obviously you can't trade your family in. That's a bit shit, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. You want to see Sky's dad? He's like the loosest cannon ever. Like <laughs> when he comes on the Instagram, it's, you know it's just going to be a wild time. <laughs> he found a photo of himself actually the other day. I came in the kitchen and he stood like his photo and he just turned it to me and he went, Whoa, look at that. I went, Yeah, he was, he was like 20 years younger. He went, You would though, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at him and I was like, just, just for a second, think who you've just said that to. He went, yeah, yeah. He went, I mean, I mean, I'm looking at it and I would, but I was like, no, <laughs> don't, don't say it again, Dad. I was like, all right. <laughs> but it's funny again, like that retrospective thing. He's looking at himself going, whoa, look at me back then. But I bet at the time he didn't really think anything of it. Mm. Yeah. And again, one of the overarching principles of this podcast is probably around, you know, our words creating our reality. We have the ability yeah. to change our environment, but I think it's very important to highlight like this, those aren't quick fixes. A lot, a lot of the time you're undoing years of ingrained habits of, of talk. And, you know, it's, it's, again, it's challenging to make these changes, but again, on the other side of that is growth. And yeah. so I guess what would your initial strategies be to, to start this process improve, of improving your self-talk of changing your environment? I know it's a quite a deep topic and there's many ways you can go with it. It is. I think, I think if there's one thing you can do is be aware start with awareness what triggers you how do you speak when do you speak like that when are your bad negative body image days when do you tend to then go and emotionally eat like awareness is the key thing because a lot of people just don't know and they just go through these negative emotions and these negative days just being like this is me this is it um so again and, and this is where it's like when I am working with someone as a coach it is my job to point out like that's quite negative language that you're using about yourself. Like, are you aware that you're doing that? And they're like, oh, no, I'm not. Because they do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Call themselves greedy or whatever. Like, I'm just fat. And they make jokes. And I'm like, yeah, you're joking. Yeah. To, to hide an actual emotion behind that. Um, so, yeah, I think awareness is the first thing. And then with the awareness comes the acceptance and trying to, to be non-judgmental, to just kind of, allow yourself to feel and experience what it is that you are going through um, or what triggers you. And sometimes, you know, practicing not acting on that, just letting it pass. And it, it is something that is going to take so much practice. It is a skill. Mindfulness is a skill. You know, changing the way that you speak and think is going to take a long time. Um, but it's never going to happen from a place of shame or hate. 
they just don't yeah. Yeah. work. It, it's such a great point. Like you'll be the same because Sean's big on language as well. Like when people check in with me, I literally have to rewrite their sentences and be like, oh, let's yeah. just let's just have a look at this and change. But just wrote some stuff things about self-esteem, self-work, and self-worth, which then I believe can lead to sort of self-acceptance, where you know, by definition, self-esteem is what we think and what we feel and believe about Your ourselves. Yeah. Which be that, where self-worth is recognizing that I am great of all those things. So, like actually, like when you're starting to talk to yourself with bad language, like pull yourself up on it. Don't just let it sit, like pull yourself up on it. Yeah. You know, yeah, and it's like replacing that. If you if you hear it again, like we said, that thought and hooking from it, like okay, no, that's not the truth. That is the story I'm telling myself. Actually, what's happened is this, and I am I am still this, and I can still get this done. And you know, reminding yourself of the other things that are part of you, like you said, that self worth and those other pillars of self esteem that you have that aren't just the way that you eat or look or train. Yeah, I love it. And we had this conversation with Jeff Ash last week about children's nutrition. Um, which you'd know Jeff from M and U as well. Which you know, a lot of this, a lot of what we're talking about now starts from now. We can we have to lead by example. We have to become this person for our next sort of generation, or the impacts that we're going to have on the next generation are, are going to be even worse. And I believe right now, to be honest, I do believe that they're going to be a little bit worse for a while before they get any better. Yeah, definitely. And it, again, like we've already said, I think. I don't have children, but a lot of my clients do. And we've had these conversations. And I think you just have to make it like the, the they, their appearance is the least interesting thing about them. You know, you compliment them on their values. You compliment them on their kindness. And yeah, well, Sean's their generosity. The least <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <that's Sean>. You <laughs> always get um but yeah I think just being mindful like you don't talk about your body you don't body shame yourself like because people always tend to think it's okay if I say it about myself it's okay if I call myself a pigeon chest or whatever you guys might say about yourself I don't know James you might say that (laughs) (laughs) I triggered triggered (laughs) he touched his chest straight away yeah I got big triceps though so it's fine it outweighs it (laughs) but yeah like you know you going around going, oh God, me and my small calves and my pigeon chest. Sorry, I don't mean to be calling you out so much. I haven't got small calves, so you can take that back. We're now a sky. Okay. <laughs> Let's get this both. Well, yeah, but then, you know, Alfie Al- grows up going, no, I don't want a p- pigeon chest. I don't want small calves. You know what I mean? Like, you just have to be really mindful that you are not, and even talking about other people's bodies, obviously, you're not talking about diets in front of them. You know, it's all about what you bring as value what your values you know what you do as a person and having healthy habits around activity and food but it does start at it very much does start from a young age and if we don't get a grip of it and people don't get a grip of it they are just passing it on love it love it love it right we have got some finishing questions quick fire quick fire you ready Ah, hell okay that was great by the way i really enjoyed that um do you want to go all right Favorite alcoholic drink? Prosecco. A celebrity that you would like to fight? James, rebuild. <laughs> celebrity hawker. <laughs> don't say James. Uh, that- <laughs> Honestly, don't. Okay, okay. A celebrity that I'd like to fight? Angelina Jolie. Ooh, ooh. Um, if you had a message on a billboard, what would it say? Don't make permanent decisions based on temporary emotions. Ooh. Favorite meal when you're hungover? Uh, Burger King, Chicken Royale. I'm not even sorry. <laughs> Favorite sport? BJJ. <laughs> One thing you wish you had, but you haven't. Loads of money. No, I'm joking. Um, I wish I had a degree. I wish I had a degree, actually. Why? What? Because I wanted to go into education and I dropped out of uni. You are. Twice. <laughs> I know, but I wanted to to go to a high level that I'll be able to without a degree. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, the first thing you do when you wake up? <laughs> Double click my own mouth, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> Pretty much before my eyes have opened. <laughs> we could lead on to the next. What's one strange quirk that you have? I don't like wearing matching underwear or bikinis. Yeah. You like a lot of leopard yeah. print, don't you? I love leopard print. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite series on Netflix? 
um, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. yeah. Till the last episode. Um, and <laughs> a book that you would gift the most? Uh, is Butter a Card? Oh, yeah. Nice. All right, Sky, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank we you. will. Well, I'll try and book you in now as well to get you out on in like 2027. We'll try and get on. <laughs> Um, to I, might, I might have a million followers and be way above your league by then. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no, we're, we're going. Um, yeah, but thank you very much for coming on. Where can people find you? Mainly on Instagram. I spend too much time on Instagram. So, yeah, at sky.elizabeth.coaching. Sky.elizabeth. Kate will put it in the show notes. She'll send you some stuff from this, but anything? Nah, beautiful. Thank you very much. Cheers, Sky. Thank you for having me.